Where do we want to start here? You want to get touch on some NFL news, Aaron Rodgers officially to the Jets, then we'll get into the into the mock? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I thought that that was sort of – it was the other news that overwhelmed this draft for me. You know, Aaron, now we support, finally get a little settlement on that. Lamar is still a possibility of be, coming into play in this draft. I think – I mean, how much longer do you sit there and, and wait on that to happen if you're the Ravens and because you've got to make some choices about what you're going to do if he's not going to be there? Trey Lance, to me, is still part of the discussion here. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, Devin White. I mean, there are NFL-proven players out there uh, that could be a part of this whole discussion. But from uh, my standpoint, and Sam, I think I've heard you say this a couple of times, this is among the weakest, and I, I'm, I'm going to sound like I'm contradicting myself here, but I think it's among the weakest of the top 10 of this draft that I can remember. I mean, who, who is the person that you're absolutely going to hang your hat on and go, this is a can't-miss prospect yeah. in those top 10 players? And for me, I don't really have one. I don't have one out of the top 10. Now, I start liking this draft as it gets into the offensive tackle position I really like, uh, the edge rushers I really like. And I like some of the safeties in this class too. I, the, the corners, we know about the top end guys with that. But I, I really think this is a bit of a down year as far as the skill position players. Um, it's it, and somebody's going to emerge. We know that that one of these five quarterbacks are going to come out and and end up being a good player. But I go into this thing going, okay, which one of those guys are going to knock Patrick Mahomes off the top spot? That's a reach to yeah. to yeah. think about I mean, any of those guys in that term. You could argue that there isn't a single blue chip prospect in this draft. Like if you if you everybody has got something wrong with them from a prospect point of view. Like Bijan Robinson, the thing wrong with him isn't his fault. It's that he's a running back, and you know there's only you could argue whether you can even have a blue chip running back. But you know Will Anderson is being talked about as one of those blue chip players. We've talked before that he's not quite at that elite elite level I'm, where the Moses yeah. and Chase Youngs are. Jalen Carter has obviously gone through his you know legal uh, problems. That that's sort of his wart as a prospect, each one of the quarterbacks has got something wrong with them. Devin Witherspoon, our number one corner, is undersized relative to what you would like to see. Christian Gonzalez, the other number one corner, depending on who you listen to, hasn't had the tape yet. He's got the athleticism, but like, you can definitely make a case that there isn't a single clean, you know, perfect blue chip prospect in this entire draft. And then my favorite part of all this is every year, you have completely different takes from us. You know, Sam and I, we, we have our own takes and we've, we've been saying them forever. And I can, I pretty much know how Sam feels about every prospect. Every now and again, you come in and you're like, oh, I don't like this guy. I like this guy or whatever it might be. And it's different. So I'm, and I don't know, we haven't talked about the players too much. So no. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. It's, it, and, and the worst thing is that from yesterday when I actually finished this thing and you go back through it do you guys do this like I go back through it for the first time and you start going this is terrible <laughs> I mean this is just not right well, you what's know? a good mock draft for you you're trying to predict it perfectly like what are you try you're trying to get into the heads of what everybody's going to do what does a mock draft look like for you I, I think that's where I I do both yeah and I do both in the same draft which yeah. is stupid you can't you can't do both in the same draft but you do yeah. get influenced by what you know is going to happen. If you know Bryce Young is going to go number one, you're not going to yeah. contradict that. You're going to, yeah. like, right off the bat, I'm going to say C.J. Stroud's going to be the friend. It's like, then they know it's you're actually, an idiot, right? It, yeah, it's very hard to do a perfect what you would do mock because you inevitably put things in that you know teams will do rather than what you would do. Like, you just, you're drawn to it. It's too obvious. It's too easy. Like, oh, this is a perfect fit for this team and they, like you make that connection it's actually really hard to sort of stay true to that concept of this is only what i would do i'm going to ignore like reality effectively yeah. now the the other one that that killed me that i know is wrong is i don't put the two cornerbacks in until like the middle 
like the teen area. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I see how the stupid it is. I no, mean, it's not, nothing stupid. No, though. but it, it, if you put Cole Strange in your mock draft, that would be stupid. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, but that we, happened. <laughs> it does help. I've got a couple of Cole Stranges in here. Nice. Too. I love it. That's what yeah. we're here for. There's yeah. going to be some. Great. Like, yeah. I, I, there's going to be a bunch of those guys this year because it's such a weird draft. Like, you're going to see. I think in the first round when we do that show on Thursday, there's going to be three or four names on that first round where you're like, what is happening? How did, like, why did anybody draft this guy in the first? I, I, I totally agree with you. And I've got a couple of guys on that list too. I, for me, the, the only player in here that just wowed me was Jalen Carter. I, I mean, yeah. but then I start, you start looking at the number of snaps that that guy has and he's not even playing like half the game. So Nobody does, am huh? I going to take, so then I started playing the game. So now, would I rather have a defensive tackle that is going to play 40 snaps a game if you get him up to better conditioning to be able to do that kind of thing or a cornerback who's going to play 75 or 80? Yeah. And then how do you do the math on that trying to go back and forth? And the quarterback class is enough to make you totally insane. <laughs> I mean, you can go totally crazy trying to break down this quarterback class and and will levis at two is that really what we're talking about now it is now so will levis and you're our, our quarterback expert around here but will levis i watched so i kind of go through different ways of watching the guys so thank god with pff we can go to their worst plays we can go to their best plays and a lot of times i do that and i went through all those plays and i go i can't understand why anybody's talking about will levis as one of the top guys i just don't get it and so then I put on his positive 0.5 plays. Run of the mill, throw it to the flat, pick up a first down, hit a pivot, do whatever the case may be. And I got it. It's the first time I ever understood what it was because I watched him went in those plays where he was moving around and his feet were shuffling and he was trying to play like Patrick Mahomes and he looked terrible to me. And then I saw the plus 0.5 plays, the sort of simple plays where he catch it, keep his feet planted, and just go pew, 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 and read the defense quickly. Get I go, he looks like an NFL quarterback. And so overnight, based on not his great plays or not his horrible plays, it was the mundane quarterback plays that said, okay, I understand if somebody wants to take him Hi, but man, there sure is a lot of other tape out there on him that makes you go, number two? Yeah. Really? Is that where we are? And then Richardson takes the ball and and has the longest thing. He, t he takes it upside down. He's like a baseball pitcher. Did you put the tracer on him to get the tracer? No, but Can we you will. use the tracer in the offseason? No, season? no. Give it to you? I should do that. I'm, should, I've got yeah. a call from my producer today. I'll, call, I'll ask him about that. <laughs> But it's got to be, I'm thinking he's going to be, his release time is going to be around four-tenths of a second, which is unplayable. It's unplayable. You In the NFL, that gives DBs way too much time to get there. Um, and so I, I think that if you go Anthony Richardson, you're going in and you're going, All right, we're, we're eating the first year. Because I'm not letting him throw the ball in the NFL until I find somebody that can teach him to get the ball up and out and, and release this thing. He's going to get killed. He's going to kill us. I'm not doing that. I'm taking a whole year and just trying to teach him how to throw the ball. But are you going to take that with the fourth overall pick and go, all right, we're just going to sit this guy out and and just wait on him? You know, so then you come all the way back and, and you're at Bryce Young and everybody loves him as a guy. Every single person I talk to said that, man, you just feel so comfortable and so at ease, and you're actually starting to teach at the NFL level with him right off the bat because he's ready to go. But to me, that's also maybe his biggest flaw is that is he really going to get any better in the NFL? I mean, what they're doing at Alabama is pretty darn good, yeah. right? And what they're teaching there is pretty darn good. And the same thing with Will Anderson. Is Will Anderson, does he have any level left for improvement, or is this as good as we're going to get here? And I think there's an argument in both those cases that that could be true.